Hi everyone, I'm a little bit late on the pool plan video for Jill the Butt. I was intending to do this before the event release but had a very busy week at work and didn't have any free time until the event hit so this is one of those few times where I will release the video right after the event debuted in the game. On top of this, at the time of making of this video, the devs haven't released information on events after Jill, so this video will only cover this one event which is Jill's Lost Chapter and covering the two banners tied to that event. First off, a quick look on how I did on the previous few events before Jill. Starting off with Wise, that was a pretty unlucky event for me because I went in immediately with gems, seeing that Wise is a new character and you know there are multiple versions of the weapons that you obviously need to collect an MLB. Unfortunately, it took me the full 80k gems investment, which is the amount required to pity the BT, so had to pity the BT for Wise. I skipped Rem because I already have her maxed out. And luckily, by the time Reno's event came around, my luck turned because I scored Reno's BT on one of the free pull. In fact, the very first pull that I did on the banner. I, I was planning to use my BT tokens there, but because of this, I can obviously save my BT tokens for one of the upcoming events. Haven't decided which one yet. So in total, while I was unlucky in Wise, overall I spent 80,000 gems. Alright, coming to Jill's last chapters where we have Jill Nabat from Final Fantasy XIII. Jill is an EX focused DPS character with additional utility in the sense that she can battery the party, heal the party and also able to stun the enemies as well. Overall seems pretty decent, but what I'll do here is go through her entire kit on this slide. On the next side, I'll give my opinion and as you can see here, I plan to skip her. So I'll give a little bit of, on my thoughts on why I made this decision. Do not know that that's obviously very biased towards my playstyle and preference. Starting off with Jill's S1, it's a single target attack that has 3 HP dumps. It does also battery the party and heal herself and it's based on the HP damage that's done. One thing to note though with Jill is that anytime she heals herself, if she has any excess healing, that then gets translated or spilled over to the rest of the party. Her S2 is a force gauge charging ability where it batteries the party based off 100% of Jill's max brave stat. As a force gauge charging ability, it is instant turn and does not contribute to the turn count. This ability also grants Jill 4 turns of her overhead and her overhead is pretty key and central to her role. While Jill's overhead is active, Jill will also deal an additional AoE Brave and HP attack that is 3 HP dumps at the end of her own turn. Take note though that this does not trigger on any ally's turn, only triggers on Jill's own turn. Before talking about the EX, I'll start off with the LD first. Her LD is an AoE HP attack that does 4 dumps in total. Her LD also grants her S2 overhead and it also gives her an LD buff that has a lot of stats for herself and for the party. Upon use, the LD also replenishes 1 skill use of her S1 and S2 and this is very important, also charges her EX meter to 100% and is also an instant turn rate. The reason why I say this is important is that her DPS is pretty centered around her EX, which is why I covered her LD first. So moving on to her EX, her EX is an AoE Brave and HP attack and very importantly it does full AoE damage to all enemies and is 7 HP dumps, but this is only if her overhead is active. If her overhead is not, this attack only does 5 dumps instead. So obviously every time you hit EX, you want to make sure that her overhead is up to get access to the plus version of the attack. This attack will also heal herself 
and as usual any excess healing will get overflowed to the party. It also inflicts 1 turn days. however assuming that you do the plus version of the attack, it also cancels her overhead. So the idea so far is that you want to use her LD to charge her EX and also grant herself her overhead which gives you automatic access to the plus version of the EX which deals more damage but cancels the overhead so you will need to use her LD again. So essentially you get the plus version once every 2 turns. Doesn't sound very good so far but this is where her BT comes in and because of this her BT is also mandatory if you want to use Jill in the butt. So first off covering the auras from the BT, her BT gives the entire party very standard BT auras in the current meta which is brief damage plus 30%, brief damage cap plus 50%, HP damage plus 20% and HP damage cap plus 30%. Importantly, her BT significantly increases her DPS because it makes her overhead follow up now triggers twice. In a way, very similar to Rex. Of course, Rex often uh, attack is triggered at the start of his turn, but if you've used Rex before, Rex had a similar mechanic where if his BT aura is up, he is often gets triggered twice every time he starts his turn. So same thing with Jill, as long as her BT aura is up, her overhead attack which is triggered at the end of her own turn will get triggered twice each time. In addition, any time her overhead falls off, and this also includes when it is cancelled by her EX, as long as her BT aura is up, she also triggers her S2 automatically when her overhead buff falls off. This is extremely important to her kit and is why her BT is very central to her role as a DPS. Essentially this means that with this you don't have to use EX every 2 turns, you can really just spam EX every single turn and it will always be the plus version. The challenge though is that you do need to find a way to allow Jill to spam EX and I'll cover a bit more about that on the next slide. Finally, moving on to Jill's FR, Jill's FR inflicts her trademark 1 turn day's debuff which is quite important because other than the FR, only her EX can inflict this debuff. Her FR has two conditions, the first requires you to do a melee attack during your turn for plus 40% and the other requires you to do AoE HP damage during your turn for another plus 40%. This means that potentially Jill can get plus 80% first gauge bonus a turn. My plan here is to skip. There's really two reasons why. The first is I really wanted to recoup some of the heavy, heavy investments I've done over the past few weeks. So this is a good opportunity for me to do so. The other is that I don't really have a lot of interest in the utility that Jill brings. I don't have a need for the stun because I usually you know, just try to blitz the boss dead and don't give them any turns so stun has no value and because of that the battery and heal also has less value. I guess the battery would be useful but there's so many ways to get brave and nowadays there's also ways to deal damage without brave so there's really not a lot of need for that. On this part of the video I'll give my thoughts and opinions on the characters. So this time there's only two characters that I will cover which is Jill and Pain. Personally, I normally just rank characters over two categories because there really isn't such thing as a bad character. Every character that gets newly updated or released is always endgame viable. To me, I would generally just put characters across two categories. The first which is the good value category. These are characters that I think are so good that generally they will give you a good return on your investment regardless of your playstyle or who you already have built in your roster. The role fulfillment categories are characters that are still good and obviously still able to give you value, but it largely depends on who you already have in your roster, hence the term role fulfillment, where if you already have other characters who can do similar things, then you may be able to get by without these characters. As always, I would highly recommend to always focus on roles that fill gaps in your roster because that's where the value of the characters come in. 
So if you are missing, say for, for example, you know, good DPS, then obviously Jill is a great pool. If you want like a support and a good character to use as a main FR, then Pain is actually pretty good. In my mind, if anyone wants to really pull for Jill, the main reason is to really abuse the, her EX and BT combination. So her EX does 7 full dumps, assuming it is the plus version, and while her BT aura is up, she gets her full up twice, so that's another 6 HP dumps for a total of 13 HP dumps, which may not sound like a lot, but don't forget that this is an AoE attack. So Jill does particularly well in fights where there are more than one enemy, and she does even better when there are 3 enemies on the field. Her FR also reflects this because one of her FR conditionals require you to do AoE HP damage. So ideally with Jill, what you want to do is get her BT aura up, and then get her overhead up, and then try to spam EX as much as possible. Because of this, characters who can generally speed up the rate of her EX charging, such as Krina or Selfie, can be good partners for Jill. You could also give Jill the U4 crystal passive, alone or in combination with the Anna Crow call. Both of these gives you a random chance to instantly fill your EX meter anytime you take an action, and they do stack together on top as well. So there is always a chance that after she uses her EX, one or both of these effects can give her a full EX meter again. Lastly, there's always the dependable Bahamut Summon, where it gives you one turn buff that refills your EX meter instantly. So there are various ways and tools to you know, recharge your EX pretty quickly, but then this also means that Jill does require some planning around and build around for you to maximize and focus on her EX damage. Jill does have other utility as well where she can battery the party, provide some healing, as well as the ability to land the Daze debuff which is a one turn stun that also increases the brave and HP damage taken by the enemy. That being said, Jill doesn't truly excel at the utility that she brings. For example, her healing is tied to the HP damage that she does and will only heal the party if she provides excess healing to herself. Her day's debuff lasts only for one turn, which I suppose is fair given that it is a stun, but there are many characters who carry a one turn stun and some characters carry disables that last for more than one turn. Overall as a character though, I suppose Jill does provide value regardless of which phase of the fight you are in. So for example, while you are setting up to build your force gauge, Jill helps there because she does have her S2 which builds your force gauge. If the enemy starts attacking you, Jill does provide days to help mitigate some of the incoming attacks, and she also provides a little bit of healing to recover some from some of the HP damage taken. And finally, of course, once you are in force time, Jill does pretty nice damage overall with her EX plus double full up attacks. So there's value of her role across the entire phase of the fight, but if you look at each individual role that she does or each individual phase, there are characters that could potentially do better on the virtue that they specialize in those roles. For me, I think I'd rather focus on characters who specialize rather than a jack of all trades kind of Swiss army knife character. And for me, I think Jill's utility has relatively less value on the basis of my playstyle where I tend to not need stuns or heals because I try to finish the stage before the boss can do too many things. Moving on to Pain, Pain didn't receive a rework on this event. However, she is still pretty decent overall as a support or debuffer. In case you're not aware, Pain has a little bit of flexibility in her role based on the position she has in your party. If she's in party slot number 3, she plays more the role of a support character with strong auras, whereas if she's in party slot number 1, she plays more the role of a debuffer instead. If she's in party slot number 2 or in the middle, she gets sort of like a mix of both her support and debuff auras. I guess that's a very general way to look at pain. She does have a very nice utility in her BT which is rather uncommon and her BT aura is also based on the position she has in, in the party. 
I won't go into so much detail but the crux of it is that depending on her position and the allies on her left and her right, with her BT Aura she has the ability to buff the party with Phoenix Pinion stacks which can give characters multiple consecutive turns and this is a very rare utility in the game. Likewise, on the debuffing end, with her BT Aura up, depending on the position of herself and her allies, she and her allies can potentially land HP silence on the enemy. So with Pain, she sort of fulfills two roles and you know you can pick whichever one depending on the fight and the rest of your party, making her truly a versatile character. I think the drawback from this though is that Pain is not very straightforward to play, she is one of the more complicated characters in the game and is really not very beginner friendly because if you want to get the most out of her, you do need to sort of compare her role with the stage mechanics and the rest of the allies that you want to bring and try to figure out you know, whether to place her in the party and when to activate her BT aura. Whether she is worth the hassle is really up to you. If really built around well and then you really learn, take the time to learn her kit and use her to the best of her abilities then she will really shine even to this day. However, given that there's a lot of great supports recently released, there is really no strong need to pull for her now I think. The only strong allure of pain now I guess is the fact that she can give Pumis feather stacks to the party because consecutive turns nowadays is still quite a rare utility and Pain is one of the few units who has that in their kit. So that's it for this video. In summary, I decided to skip Jill and her stage is actually fairly easy. You can even carry a bronze Jill. I've done that as well. You can check out my two runs that I did, one with Astos, one with Aranya, but essentially the same run. I already have Pain fully built anyway, so there's no real need to pull on both banners. Thanks for watching, I hope the video has been helpful, and until then, I'll catch you guys in the next Full Plan video. Bye!